The International Association of Sound and Audiovisual Archives was established in 1969 to function as a medium for international cooperation between archives that preserve recorded sound and audiovisual documents. IASA has members from 70 countries representing a broad palette of audiovisual archives and personal interests. We have sections and committees that help address problems across the spectrum of audiovisual content. This includes technical care and handling guidelines, understanding the use and proliferation of audiovisual content, and the great challenges faced by all institutions that hold audiovisual documents. UNESCO declared Audiovisual Archive Heritage a national or a worldwide day um, on the 27th of October. And with that came the indication that AV archives do matter. We've got footage and audio recordings that you cannot find in your normal paper documents and you have to visit the archive to get first-hand information. So AV archives over the, what, 100 odd years has become increasingly more important um, than initially thought. Uh, for the last hundred years, the conversation around media preservation was largely a conversation about art and culture. And now audiovisual recording is everywhere in modern cultures. The history of the 20th century, from the most ordinary lives to the most extraordinary events, is history captured on audiovisual and recorded sound technologies. Audiovisual heritage matters because it plays a significant part in framing our collective memory of the last century or more. So much efforts and resources have been put into documenting audiovisual resources made up of news, stories, oral histories and many more. These have triggered social movements, caused national independence, cultural unification, scientific discoveries, as well as artistic creations. The resources in audiovisual archives make us aware of who we are as a people and tell us stories of the past. I should say that referencing the past is very important when we want to move forward as a people. And so the past embedded in these archives become invaluable in the tracing of information on individual families or generational histories globally. And so drawing the past to propel the present into the future is very important. It is this wisdom in learning from the past which ensures a strong future. When sound recording and film were invented in the late 19th century, really they were inventing a way of recording time as it passed for the first time. So that allows us, when we replay those recordings, to immerse ourselves in times other than our own, taking us closer to past events and in more detail than was ever possible before. In the late 1800s, cylinders, lacquer discs and other forms of grooved media formed an early reliance on specialised equipment to record and play back the sounds that were captured. The first motion picture camera was invented in 1888, allowing for movement and visual storytelling. The 1940s gave birth to magnetic audio tape. As early as the 1950s, it was possible for people to have 8mm film cameras to document important family and cultural events. Later in the 1900s, magnetic tape was used for audio, video, and other time-based media. Formats like VHS, Umatic, Betamax, and the audio cassette. This allowed for home recording and viewing as well. Use of magnetic tape began to decline after the introduction of optical media like the compact disc, or CD, which saturated the market in the early 1990s, followed by digital video disc, DVD, and then Blu-ray and 4K optical discs. The new frontier is digital-born and streaming content, which requires significant infrastructure, including media asset management, security and access management, digital preservation, and more. At this point in time, we're facing two serious and urgent threats to our audiovisual heritage. The first is the degradation of many formats. They're literally falling apart on the shelves, through age, through the uh, materials they were made from. The second threat, perhaps a greater one in some senses, is the technological obsolescence of the formats. It's one thing to preserve a reel-to-reel -reel tape or a cassette or a disc, but it's another thing to ensure you've preserved the replay system required to access the content. So nobody is remaking uh, professional tape machines anymore. Very few people are remaking the spare parts required to replay some of these devices. 
In comparison to classical text documents, audiovisual preservation is more complex. Text documents, like museum objects, are preserved by optimizing the physical integrity of the original. Generally, audiovisual carriers are less stable than conventional desk documents and therefore in need of tighter handling and storage conditions. This is the first problem. But there is a second one. Audio and video are machine-readable documents. Uh, archives have to preserve the carrier, the machine, and, in case of digital documents, the coding schemas to interpret the digital contents. In order to avoid uh, the loss of quality from one generation to the next, this process has to be performed in the digital domain. Consequently, analog original documents have to be digitized first. And digitization is a key element of audiovisual preservation. This new concept was adopted for audio already in the early 1990s followed by video around 2000 and more recently also for film preservation as digital storage costs have plunged. The separation of content from its original has to follow uh, ethical principles, strict methodological rules and is technically demanding nothing must be left behind. Consequently, the Technical Committee of YASA has released altogether four standards dealing with the safeguarding of audiovisual documents. YASA DC03 is a general introduction and the ethics, principle and preservation strategy of the audiovisual heritage. This publication outlines current best practices in the care and preservation of audio documents. This includes handling, digitization specifications, including analog to digital conversion, and more. YASA DC04 are the guidelines on the production and preservation of digital audio objects. YASA DC05 relates to handling and storage. Uh, of audio and video carriers to protect those before they can be digitized. And ultimately, uh, YASA TC-06 are the guidelines for the preservation of video recordings. Uh, all these are available uh, as web versions from the YASA website some are also available in different languages. General overview on audiovisual documents and their preservation is part of a book recently published about the UNESCO Memory of the World program. And I want to emphasize that international collaboration is key when it comes to audiovisual heritage preservation, as it gives room to constructive dialogue between peoples and cultures and provides a fabric of instruments and approaches to tackle issues on a subject such as audiovisual archiving. Relatively, YASA offers solutions to complex technical problems that could not be solved with the relevant institution's domestic resources alone as it has put in place the necessary frameworks to help achieve this goal. In moving forward, the audiovisual archive should be easily accessible through digitization. And that is a trending issue now which we all need to embrace. Archives should be allowed to grow by broadening the scope of the collection Archives should be the foundation for a living arts rather than a passive repository. Archives should not be a forgotten piece where unwanted things are dumped, for example, in the basements 
and our storerooms, but rather archives should be used creatively. These continuous upgrades and these continuous changes within that and every migration causes its own problems. Um, and that in itself is also a threat and a challenge. How do you migrate without losing content? Um, so the whole shift from looking at the playback equipment and the container shifted to how do I preserve content? And I think that is far more important and relevant than ever before. Um, with that also came uh, where I used to catalogue, and at least as I could find it in my catalogue cabinets and cards, um, I now had to look at metadata and how do I build a metadata framework and um, that the whole company can use and where it's easy to access the, the content. Audiovisual preservationists today are working to save not only major historical events, but also local news coverage, home movies of weddings and family vacations abroad, scientific data, social movements, and more. This work represents enormous challenges. Today's digital media environment is more complex than ever before, and the volume of material that is being recorded is immeasurable. The question of what we can and should save from our collective record with the limited resources that are devoted to preservation becomes a question of social justice and of democratic norms. Who deserves to be a part of history? Whose stories deserve to be remembered and passed on? to be lessons that shape an unknown future. Our collective memory is shaped by what remains. In alignment with UNESCO's mission, preservation and access of our audiovisual heritage should be a sustainable mission, one driven by principles of democracy and the public good. <laughs>